welcome to the next video in my Merchant Navy How To series. In this short video, I'll be explaining how we can calculate the compass error using the much faster amplitude method, and the key differences between using this method and the previously explained azimuth method. In the previous videos in this series, I have used the azimuth method to calculate the bearing of the celestial object, to then work out our compass error. The azimuth method can be used for any visible celestial body at any position in the sky and is accurate at any latitude. The amplitude method is possible as when a body is on the celestial horizon, its zenith distance is 90 degrees. Therefore we can use Napier's rules to calculate the amplitude angle. Practically this results in a much easier and faster calculation. The downside to using the amplitude method is that we can only use it when a body is sitting on its celestial horizon and if we're using it at high latitudes there is a possibility of error due to refraction. Due to the need for the celestial body to be on the celestial horizon, it is only practical to use this method with the sun or the moon, and it's only possible for a short period around the rise or setting of the body. The celestial horizon is not the same as the visible horizon, and as such the bearing has to be taken when either the sun's lower limb is two-thirds its diameter above the horizon, or in the case of the moon, when its upper limb is just touching the horizon. As the moon is only in position for a few seconds, it's normally preferable to only use amplitude for the sun. So let's get started. As we normally use amplitude to calculate our compass error from the sun, we need to know the vessel's position, the date and time relative to universal time, the observed bearing of the sun, and if we are going to calculate the magnetic compass error as well, we need to know the ship's heading by gyro and magnetic compasses. For this calculation, we're in position 26 degrees north and 30 degrees west. It's 2018 and 10 seconds universal time on the 9th of April 2016. We took the bearing of the sun as 279 degrees and our ship's gyro compass is 274 degrees. For this example I'm not going to calculate the magnetic compass error as this process is the same as in all my previous examples. To make things easy I have prepared a brief pro forma which is in a similar format to my Azimuth Pro Forma and can be downloaded from my website. The link's in the description below. We'll now fill in our known information in the appropriate boxes on the Pro Forma. You'll notice that we only require the latitude and declination for an amplitude calculation. The declination we obtain from the daily pages of the Nautical Almanac. So if we look up 20 hundred hours on the 9th of April, we obtain the declination as north 7 degrees 57.9. We also observe that the declination between 20 hundred hours and 2100 hours is increasing. We also have a correction to apply, which we obtain by looking at the CD value on the bottom of the column, in this case 0.9. To get the correction that we need to apply, we turn to the yellow pages in the back of the almanac, which are titled Corrections and Increments. Turning to the 18 minute page, we read off the correction value as 0.3, which as declination was increasing, we add, giving a corrected declination of north 7 degrees 58 decimal 2. The latitude we already know, so for completeness we can fill that value in as well. We now turn to our much simplified formula and put our values into it. This gives us a value of 8 decimal 9, which we name north as the declination was north and west as it is taken at sunset. If you've been using my pro forma for the azimuth method, take note that the amplitude is calculated relative to east or west. So in the case of the northwest quadrant, we add our value to 270, giving us a true bearing of 278.9 degrees. This is different to what you have been doing with the azimuth method. And that's it, you've now calculated the bearing of the sun by amplitude. To complete our compass error, we simply do as we have done previously. Subtract the gyro bearing from our true bearing, which gives us an error of negative 0.1, which we name high. To then calculate our true heading, we take our gyro heading and apply the gyro error, which in this instance gives us a true heading of 273.9 degrees. If we were calculating the magnetic error, we would continue as we have done previously and complete the table. I hope you found this short video useful, be sure to check out my other how-to videos and click like and subscribe to my channel to be notified when I post other tutorials. Until next time, safe sailing.